The Fairies of Merlin's Crag Three centuries and a half ago, there lived a man who worked in a Scottish farm. The man was called an Aura Man, which meant someone who did all kinds of odd jobs for his master. One evening, his master sent the Aura Man to the end of a moor to pick out all the peaks that had grown there. Eager to do his master's bidding, the Aura Man did as he was told, and he whistled as he worked. By the end of the hour, he had pulled out a considerable amount of peat, when suddenly, standing before him, he saw the tiniest woman he had ever seen. How would you like it if we pulled out the roof of your home this autumn? What? Who are you? Ooh, never mind who I am. Put all the peat back exactly where you pulled it out from. Now, and do not bother us again. No, no, no. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, right away. The scared Aura Man did exactly as he was told and put every divot back where he had dug it out from. Then he went rushing to his master back in the farm. Sir! Sir, we must never, ever go to that part of the moor again. What do you mean? There are fairies there, and today we got a warning from them. We are not to touch those peats again. <laughs> are you all right? What kind of a right-thinking man believes in fairies? Don't you dare give such terrible excuses for your laziness. Believe me, master, I met one of them when I was there. She was a small... Enough! Looks like you fell asleep and had a dream. Now, go and finish the job I gave you, or else I shall have no option but to fire you. Got that? So, the Aura Man had no other option but to go back to the moor and pull out the peats again. He trembled as he did that, fearful that the little fairy might show up and punish him. But nothing of the sort happened. Weeks, months, and an entire year rolled by. The Aura Man encountered nothing unusual or uncomfortable. Perhaps Master was right. It must have all been just a dream. How silly I must have looked to have gone to him in such panic. Finally, it was the day in autumn, the exact day when the Aura Man had met the fairy a year ago. He had just finished his work for the day. May I leave for the day, Master? Ah, yes. I must say that I am mighty pleased with your work, my man. So here is a little reward for you. Take this can of milk. Perhaps your wife can cook you a custard today. Oh, thank you, Master. Thank you so much. And off the Aura Man went home. How pleased his wife and son would be to see the extra milk. He whistled on his way. But soon he began to feel tired. As tired as he had never felt before. It was a wonder that his home had not arrived yet. The Aura Man felt so sleepy that he felt he could not take one step more. And he lay down on the grass, fast asleep. He was awakened by the sweetest music he had ever heard. Mm -hmm. Where am I? Hello, you're finally awake. Get up, come dance with us. The Aura Man saw a whole lot of tiny little folk dancing. Oh, come dance with us. I cannot dance. The music, the music will, make, will you. make you. And sure enough, the music was so beautiful that the Aura Man felt a joy in the core of his being, and he knew not how long, how much he danced. It was as if the music was playing right inside of him, dancing through him. Then suddenly, it is going to be daybreak. Quick, everyone! All the fairy folk disappeared under the earth and dragged the Aura Man with them. Down below, he just sat there, seeing the little people go about their business, doing things that seemed queer to him. It was odd, but not once did the thought of returning home occur to him. Then the fairy he had first met came up to him. You have been here long enough. 
and the peach you pulled out have grown again. You may now return. Yes. Well, thank you. But if you tell anyone what you saw here, you shall receive a punishment you have never imagined. I... I promise never to tell anyone anything I saw here. And suddenly, the Aura Man found himself at the exact spot he had fallen asleep. The can of milk was still there. He picked it up and sprang home. But what was this? His hut had changed. A strange little boy was playing there. He went to his wife. Wife? Who is that? You! Where were you? That I cannot say. But... Where were you all these years? Years? The master gave me a can of milk yesterday. Yesterday? We've been looking for you seven long years. How could you just leave? Leave me and our son. Our son? He is our son? But I was just gone for... Seven years? So this was their punishment. What was one night in their land was seven years here. The Aura Man had received his punishment. So often we take the forces of nature for granted. We don't know whether trees and flowers and grasses have fairy folk in them. But if we are cruel to nature, we will be punished. A punishment we shall have brought upon ourselves. The End <laughs>